All right, in this video, I'm going to show you a really cool way to use tape diagrams to understand uh, how to convert an improper fraction into a mixed number and how to um, uh, convert a mixed number back into an improper fraction. Ignore the fact that I'm using the phrase improper fractions. There's nothing wrong about these fractions. They just, the word improper fraction just means the fraction is greater than one. So the top number is bigger than the bottom. So anyway, let's just get started on this. All right, so let's start with, oh, let's say we're gonna start with the fraction five fourths. And we, we wanna understand five fourths. Um, now, I can draw five units. So that's what that fraction means. That fraction five fourths means I have five equal sized units. And uh, that's what I've got right here. So five equal sized units. That's what the five stands for. Now the four stands for the fact that, so first off, let's make sure we understand that each of these is a fourth. So I'm just gonna fill in these things. So we've got five fourths. So that five means we have five units. And this four means each one of these is called a fourth. So we have a one fourth, another one fourth, another one fourth, another one fourth, another one fourth, and another one fourth. All right, so now, Oops, there we go. Okay, so that four also means that we have four pieces. It takes four pieces, four fourths, to make one whole. We don't have any enough fourths to make another whole, so that means five fourths is really the same thing as one whole and one fourth. All right, so let's, let's do another quick example of that. Oh, let's say, let's do uh, eight thirds. So what does eight thirds mean? Well, eight thirds means we have eight units and each of those units is a one third. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm just gonna copy and duplicate it and then I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna duplicate it and then I'm gonna take all of those and duplicate it. So now I have eight thirds. That's what that means, eight thirds. And then because that denominator is a three, that means it takes three pieces to make one whole, it takes three thirds to make one whole. We don't have enough thirds left over to make another whole, but we have two thirds left over. So eight thirds is equal to two holes and two thirds. All right, so now that is how we turn an improper fraction into a mixed number. Now we're going to turn a mixed number into an improper fraction. So let's say we've got, oh, let's say we've got uh, uh, two and uh, one third. All right, what does two and one third mean? Well, I know what two means. Two means I have two holes. So there's one hole, there's one hole, and I don't quite have another entire hole. So what do that, that means basically each of these holes have been cut into three pieces and because the, what, that is way too big. Let's make that a smaller ink. All right, there, there's one hole right there. That's one hole right there. And then we can repeat the process and say, here's another hole. Let's do it in, in blue. So there's another hole right here. One, two, three. And then because the fraction is one third, so we've got two and one third, that means we've got only one third to go right here. So now we can see here, is our two and one third. Now, what does that equal as an improper fraction? Well, each of those little pieces represents one third. So there's a third, there's a third, there's a third. 
and then here's a third, here's a third, here's a third, and lastly we have one final third. So all together we have seven thirds. So two and a third is equal to seven, what is equal to seven thirds. All right, there you go. So let's do one last example for turning an, a mixed number into an improper fraction. Oh, let's say we've got uh, three and three fourths, all right? Uh, now let's, yeah, let's do, let's do three and three fourths. So let's do three and three fourths. So what does that mean? Well, that means we have one hole, we have another hole, we have another hole, so that's our three, and we don't quite have a complete fourth hole, but I'm going to draw the hole four, four holes, and because that denominator right here is a four, that means each of these pieces are cut into four pieces, each of these hole numbers are cut into four pieces. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then what? And then one, two, three, four. Now three and three fourths, let's just shade in. What does three and three fourths look like? And I'll make that a little bit bigger. So three and three fourths means we have all of this guy. So that's one hole. And then we have all of another one. Then we have all of yet another one. So that's our three holes. And then the fraction is three fourths. So we only have three out of the four in that final piece. So all together, we have right here, we have three and three fourths. So now we need to count up the fourths. So. I can see that I have four fourths here, another four fourths here, another four fourths. So altogether I've got 12 fourths, and then I have three extra fourths. So I have 12 fourths right here, plus the extra three fourths. So altogether I see I have 15 fourths. So three and three fourths is equal to 15 fourths. Now teachers and parents, yes, there's some rules and tricks that we could teach kids, but we're gonna get there through first making sure our students understand how to represent the improper fractions and the mixed numbers as tape diagrams, and then using that understanding to do the renaming process as needed. I hope this helps.